Hey, what's going on everyone? This is iReviews back with another video and today I will show you guys 10 amazing iPhone features that I believe are very very useful but no one is using anymore and you totally should. These are features that have been released most of them a long time ago, some of them are even newer but no one actually uses them on their device even though they are pretty useful. Now before we get into all that, another useful thing is the like button on this video. That will help the video go a long way and of course the subscribe button as well because most of you guys that watch my videos are currently not subscribed so make sure to do so before leaving the video. We're starting things off with this part right here, the old school iOS widgets. These are the widgets that we had before iOS 14 home screen widgets. They are still here but no one uses them even though in my opinion these are way more useful than the current widgets that we have on iOS 14 and 15 which actually don't do anything besides displaying information on your home screen. Now with these you can do a lot. So here I have three of them. I have one from TikTok right here. It shows me like different videos which of course I can go ahead and open any one of them directly from here simply by tapping it. I can refresh this so it will show me all new videos. I have this one for Google Chrome right here. I can go ahead and do a new search, go to incognito search, do a voice search or scan a QR code or just visit the link that I have copied directly from here. It is as easy as that. And then we have one from NordVPN right there. I don't even need to open the app to just connect to VPN. I can quickly connect from here or just tap for more and of course choose my connection from here. This is how useful these widgets are and I believe this is something Apple should implement on home screen widgets in the future. This is way way better than the current home screen widgets which actually don't do anything at all. Like you see this battery widget right here, why not tap on it and maybe just go ahead and enable low power mode. You cannot do anything with this widget. All you have here is information that is being displayed on the home screen of your device. And this one is new with iOS 15 but it seems like nobody actually uses the feature. So when you're doing a FaceTime call you can go to your control center and you will have your mic right here. If you just 3D touch on it you will have voice isolation. This is a really good feature that will actually isolate the voices around you make the quality of the call way way better. So you will have these settings, this is newer as I said with iOS 15 you will have the settings for your microphone and for the video as well you can like do portrait mode for the video right here for FaceTime so once you open FaceTime of course all you have to do is just tap right there you can go ahead and choose portrait mode. These are two settings that actually no one uses anymore and they are pretty cool and will make the quality of your FaceTime call way way better. Moving on to the notes app, you can see right here on iCloud I have 741 different notes. If I want to search for an exact note, it will show me a lot of different notes on the search results and it will be really really hard to find the notes that I need. But of course there is a feature that most people actually don't use and that's the hashtags for notes. Like you can see the tags right here, I can search for new right here, you can see it shows me just the notes with that hashtag and it's pretty simple to do. All you gotta do is just add hashtag and add the word that you want to use on that note and that of course will be categorized in the, into that tag. Or if you go to your tags right here you can see you can select one of them and then just tap the new button and it will start a new note with that hashtag already included on the note. Hashtags for notes, an amazing feature. If you have a lot of notes, use the notes app a lot. You will find this super, super useful. Moving on to the calendar app. Here I have an event. It says I was 16 beta one. That's actually just an event I created and I believe on this date we might see I was 16 beta one getting released. But what we're talking about here or attachments to your calendar events. So let's say you add a calendar event, maybe something you have to do or like a seminar or let's say you have lectures or something like that, you need to have some kind of attachment, maybe a PDF or something to it. You can see right here we have the attachment. You can add any attachment you want to your calendar events. Simply tap the edit button, you will have attachments right here. You can tap to add more and have your attachments right there on the calendar event. Super super useful and of course a feature that most people probably don't even know about and never use on their device. 
This feature right here is one that I use all the time and it's probably one of my favorite features of iPhones. Even though it's not that cool, it does the job and it is super, super useful. So of course, all of us have some contacts which are important people to us, maybe family members, close friends and things like that. But when you switch off your iPhone, the mute button, actually, you cannot hear the calls from them. Maybe there is an emergency or something like that. You need to always have those people be able to reach you. But of course, you don't want to leave your iPhone unmuted. What you can do is mute your iPhone, but go to that contact and tap the edit button. And from here, go to ringtone and you will have here emergency bypass. This is super useful. You enable this click the dumb button and now anytime this specific contact will try to call you even though your iPhone might be muted you will still hear their call so it will bypass the mute button moving on to downloads so you know when you're downloading apps maybe updating a lot of apps there are apps that you need to use maybe quickly faster than the others and you don't want to wait for all the apps to be updated to in order to use that app all you gotta do is just 3d touch on that icon while it's downloading and you can go ahead and tap on prioritize download that way if you're updating let's say a lot of apps that app will be updated and of course it will finish the installation first before the other apps so you don't have to wait for the process to finish for all the apps to have access to the app that you actually need and here is a feature that I know most people actually don't use. Maybe they use it, but they don't use it the correct way. And that's the home bar on the iPhone. So you're on the home screen. You don't actually need to tap on any app or go to the app switcher to open the apps that you're using. All you have to do is just swipe like this here. You can go to the last app that you use. You can swipe like this on the home bar to switch between the apps that you're using. You can see how easy that is. Like I see a lot of people that are using an app. They want to go to another app. They go back to the home screen, find the app and open it. You don't have to. All you got to do is just go ahead and swipe like this to quickly switch between apps or just swipe up like this to go to the app switcher. Or if you're within an app, you can just swipe down here to invoke reachability mode so that you can reach any corner of the screen with one finger. Now you can see on the home screen here what I have. So I have a few apps there and you can see these apps right here and you can see their label right there. It's not the same color as these ones right here because this is a widget. This is the series suggested apps widget. I believe this one to be one of the most useful widgets that Apple has added to iOS 14 and 15. It will actually update all the time and all the time based on place and time of the day. It will show you and suggest you the apps that you usually use during that period. And you will have this, of course, anywhere you want on the home screen. You can have multiple of these widgets, which all will display different apps. If you have like two of these widgets, they're, they're only on the medium sides. If you have two of them on the home screen, they will both display different apps, not the same apps. So you can just have quick access to the apps that you need directly from here. And of course, all the time based on place, time of the day and things like that, it will suggest you the apps that you actually use the most. And there is the contacts widget. I know this is a new widget that has been released with iOS 15, but not a lot of people actually use it, even though I believe it is super useful. We always have, of course, contacts that most of them will be contacts that we contact daily. We need maybe their email, their phone number or anything else. You can have that on the home screen without having to bother to look through the the contacts app or the phone app you can have them on the home screen and just tap at it and you can see all the details right here you can see the links that they have shared the photos that they have shared on imessage you can see the, their messages right here and of course message call facetime or mail them all of them from one place right here on the home screen using contacts widget which is in my opinion is super useful probably the most useful widget that we have for iOS 14 and 15. You can even add, of course, multiple contacts with the bigger widgets, or you can have smaller widget stacks on one another and just change the contact to any contact you want and have multiple contacts in one stack of widgets. And last but not least is 3D Touch. I know a lot of people don't actually like this feature, but I believe it to be super useful in a lot of cases. Like on Safari, if you want to open an incognition tab, you can see right here, go to Safari, go to tabs, tap and hold here, whatever you want to do. 
and I don't actually even know where I should go to just like open a new Ecognition tab right here on Safari. So let's just try this out. So yes, we go here somewhere and go to private. That's actually really annoying. It takes a lot of time to do that. But with 3D Touch, you can just tap there and go new private tab. That's how easy it is. So you can actually use 3D Touch pretty much for everything on iOS, even on the control center. Like if we go right here to notes, I can 3D Touch and create a new note or take a photo, scan a document directly from here. So it's super useful in a lot of cases. And I know most people nowadays don't actually even use this feature at all. So that is it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And of course, just a quick reminder to you that these features are on your iPhone and they're super useful and you must try them out right now. So let me know what's your favorite feature out of these all and whether you use them or not on your iPhone. Again, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Leave a like on this one and I'll see you on the next video.